Cars, the new movie by Pixar, directed by John Lasseter. You, you may know that there were stories in the press a while ago in June. Um, Disney executives are reported as being really rather depressed by the performance of Cars at the box office and uh, wondering whether or not it was going to hit the 200 million mark. Of course, it's, as far as I can tell, it's 230 million and still going. So, I mean, that's something to be really rather depressed about. As far as, I mean, it is astonishing what now constitutes a lacklustre performance by a Pixar film. I mean, amounts of money that you can't even begin to imagine. So the story is, it's in a world which is populated entirely by cars, no people. You remember the thing recently with The Incredibles, which was this whole question about whether or not they could do just a people movie, although The Incredibles, of course, were superheroes. In this case, just cars. Central car character, um, voiced by Owen Wilson, called Lightning McQueen, is a racing car. He's on his way to a race. Stuff happens. He ends up in Radiator Springs, which is a tiny little town, where for plot reasons which are not that complicated he is forced to stay for a while and as in the nature of doc hollywood or any of these stories while staying in radiator springs he learns some lessons in life not least from uh, paul newman who voices doc hudson as always great old stars appearing as voiceover art- uh, artists it's absolutely lovely <clears throat> to look at it has fantastic design particularly if like me you're into 50s Americana, you're into that kind of the particular form of pastel shades which you really don't get so much anymore. Um, the landscapes alone are astonishing because one of the things they decided very early on was that in the same way that people will see shapes that are familiar to people when they look at clouds, for example, they'll see things that they recognise. The idea was that in a car world everything would look sort of car-like to cars. So as they're driving through this American desert which looks like Nevada or Arizona, you see these rock formations that look like the rear end of a Ford or look like you know the, the front end of a Dodge. And, of course, the place that he's holed up in is called Radiator Springs. And from a design point of view, it's absolutely lovely. There has been some controversy about whether or not putting the car's eyes in the windshield rather than you know in the more traditional way of doing it in the headlights was a good idea. Some people think it's too cute for its own good. It actually didn't bother me in the slightest bit. So from a design point of view, I absolutely loved it. Now, inherent in that praise is a criticism, which is when you watch Pixar movies the most extraordinary thing about them is they are brilliantly designed brilliantly executed John Lasseter was doing this kind of 3D CG animation it was very very cutting edge even before Toy Story and the thing I always said was it's interesting you never say that first you never say wow it looked great you say what great characters what great story what great plot what great jokes in the case of Cars it's probably the first time with a Pixar movie that the, the, the most important thing is the design it doesn't have the kind of wacky jokes and humour that the other the movies have had previously. I mean, Toy Story is laugh out loud funny. If you've got kids and you've seen them watching Toy Story, I mean, it is just a laugh every three or four minutes. Plus, it's very emotionally engaging, particularly Toy Story 2, incidentally. In the case of Cars, I wonder what a very young audience would make of it. Because I sat there enraptured by the look of it, and I sat there really, really enjoying it on a visual level. But I was aware that what I wasn't getting was the quick-fire, rapid, you know, real gripping emotional involvement that I've had in other Pixar films. Now, obviously, I had a problem with The Incredibles. I thought The Incredibles was not going to play to a young audience, and I was spectacularly wrong about that. Um, In the case of Cars, I... I like it very much because I like the design, because I like the look, because I like the visual aesthetic, and because I think there's something brave about attempting to do those characters without any people at all. I mean, it's a totally... It's an eco-non-friendly film to some extent because it's all about cars. There aren't any people whatsoever. But... I am aware of the fact that when I think of it, I think of it as images. I think that there's an exhibition on at the moment. If you go down to um, the uh, Science Museum, there's an exhibition of... Pixar. In London, is that? In, in London, yes. that would be. I, listen, I live in Southampton, so, you know. Um, so I went to London and I saw the exhibition. And these extraordinary oil paintings that they've done and pastels and drawings everything for the backgrounds. And you really could spend a few hours there. But I think it is both the best and the worst thing about cars. To say it looks absolutely lovely, and particularly if, like me, you have a fondness for that look, it's absolutely ravishing. And yet, it doesn't have the characters, it doesn't have the gags, it doesn't have the absolute quote-a-minute thing that Pixar's movies have had in the past. It's a much slower and longer feeling film than the other Pixar films. And I suspect that despite the cute eyes, it plays older than Cars. But I would say, even as I say that, I was very wrong about The Incredibles. I just didn't think that a young audience would sit through that first 20 minutes of Mr Incredibles working in an insurance office and having a bad time. But apparently they do. But my own feeling about it was, it's visual first, and I love the visuals, but that's... You know, that is what it is. 